So um, again, I'll, I'll keep it real brief. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, we are the National Junior College Athletic Association Esports, uh, and we were founded in 2019. And, and from day one, our focus really has been on removing all barriers to entry, uh, not only for students, but, but for colleges uh, and institutions that wanna start esports programs. Um, we're confident uh, that we're gonna be able to create additional pathways for students. Um, and what we found is that, you know, and it's not just in higher education, but um, in higher education, esports is an engagement strategy and a recruiting strategy. And so, you know, we've really set upon this path with this partnership with the Army National Guard uh, to bring additional education and awareness uh, to students, but more importantly to parents. Uh, I, I don't know that a lot of parents uh, are aware that there are scholarships that are out there. I mean, Bubba, you know that all too well. Your organization is giving away uh, lots of money on a pretty routine basis. And I know you shared last time there's upwards of $5 million in scholarships uh, that's going unclaimed uh, on an annual basis. So, you know, I've heard stories about uh, from high school coaches uh, that have said that some of their students have actually been offered scholarships. And they've turned them down and decided not even to, to pursue uh, an addition, uh, uh, a degree. And so we really, more than anything, you know, want to bring some additional awareness to the space. And so, you know, at the NJCAAE, we are the only exclusively two-year college association. So really what that means more than anything is that from a competitive standpoint, it's, a, it's an apples to apples comparison uh, or a level playing field. You're not playing against four-year schools that have uh, you know, uh, the, the resources to buy necessarily top of the line equipment uh, and, and invest lots of time and, and effort into that. Um, it's just our fourth competitive semester. Um, so you know, two years, well, we've already uh, reached uh, 81 member colleges uh, and that spans the, really uh, the entire continent. And so uh, we're really, really excited about that. We have over 1,500 students participating and more than 10 game titles. Um, and, and I think what really distinguishes us from a, a lot of the other associations is not just the exclusive two-year piece, but for us, we're really applying uh, the best parts of esports and the best parts of traditional sports. And so we provide... Um, you know, standard uh, governance uh, for the association. So what that means is students must qualify academically. You know, simply put, if you don't make the grades, then you don't get to play. Uh, we require a minimum of a 2.0 grade point average and full-time enrollment. Uh, and so again, the, the, the whole idea behind this is that we want students uh, to participate in the games and uh, to complete their degree. Uh, but it's not just about competition for us. You know, we're, we, we're building a streaming affiliate program. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with our, our association and have watched uh, what we do on stream or on, excuse me, on Twitch, if you go back and watch uh, some of those VODs that are on there, you'll see that we have, uh, we have some women uh, that are participating in those streams. And in some instances, it's, uh, they're, they're beginners uh, because they're, they're trying to cut their teeth, so to speak, uh, and the space, and we certainly want to help them do that. Uh, we're the only STEM.org accredited college uh, esports uh, association. Um, so for us, it's not just about competition, it's about the classroom as well. And then really the, the last uh, couple comments that I want to make is uh, regards the five committees uh, that we've created, uh, specifically our equity, diversity, and inclusion committee. Um, you know, for us, we're all about self-governance and uh, focusing on being a member-driven association. So the purpose of the committee is to create, promote, and support programming uh, that ensures uh, really the highest levels uh, of inclusivity. Uh, so to date, that group, uh, they, they've done a lot. Uh, one of their primary tasks initially was to review every rule and every bylaw that we have. Uh, just, you know, to, to ensure that those were sound from a, a variety of perspectives. Uh, they established a partnership with the Rise to Win organization. Uh, Rise is a national nonprofit that really focuses on traditional sports. And, you know, they are uh, they're really in the who's who uh, of that space. Uh, we were able to partner with them to build uh, a first of its kind 
partnership with them uh, in esports. Uh, we're working with AnyKey. Uh, they're an advocacy group that supports diversity, inclusion, and equity in competitive gaming. Um, and they're, you know, they're really focusing on amplifying and connecting marginalized, uh, marginalized players. And, you know, we're trying to align some strategic initiatives uh, to that end. And then lastly, um, uh, the Gamehurst group. Um, I'm just really, really excited that Rebecca Dixon's here with us tonight. Um, I, I'm going to leave it at that because I'm just not going to do it with justice and uh, do it any justice. So um, I'll turn it over to you, Bubba, unless uh, there's there's any other yeah. questions that you want me to address. No, Jeff, that was great. That's that's a good insight. I mean, with, with the dozens of people here in, in watching in tonight, definitely wanted to learn more about maybe them as a student, learning how they can participate in college esports or as a parent how do they really help their kids understand or maybe they understand what their kids are doing so it's great information and you can check out more information uh on online uh, it just you, know, you can search up njcwe i'm sure you can find you guys on twitter uh so yeah check them out so thank you jeff for being here tonight and we'll we'll move on sir i appreciate you thanks so much you got it thank you well, if you're just tuning in, so we're in this Women in Esports panel uh, webinar tonight. Uh, we've got some great information. Stick around for information about a $500 scholarship, about a Twitch stream, about some other things going on. But I wanted to first talk about our, our next guest before she comes up on the stage. And that is our friend, Miss Specialist Tiffany Beamsterbor. And she is a, she's also known as T. She's been creating online content since 2011, has been an avid gamer since the late 90s. In 2013, Tiffany started streaming Halo and various other games on Twitch. Since then, she grew an interest in the esports industry and would later become affiliated with numerous esports gaming organization. organizations. Tiffany loves to bring a positive presence to the competitive environment of the esports and gaming community while also serving in the Army National Guard. Tiffany, please come on in and join us if you wouldn't mind turning your camera on. Hello, how are you? Oh, hello. How are you doing, Bubba? I am super. Thank you so much for being here. I'm glad you're here to talk to us and give us some perspective what it's like being awesome. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm really excited. <laughs> Well, I wanted to round off some first questions. I know you're, you're going to jump into the, the panel with us a couple of times today, and I wanted to kind of get some perspective from you, um, you know, as a female gamer, as someone in the Army National Guard, um, just what really for you, what what initially made you interested in the Army National Guard? Oh, I, as funny as it sounds, I don't really have an exact um like moment in time where I initially um, started looking into the National Guard, I would say maybe I was like four years old. I don't know how far back my memory goes, uh, but yeah. ever since I was a kid, I wanted to join the army. And I think a lot of it um, comes from my father. He actually served in the army a uh, long, long time ago. <laughs> and um, I think uh, with my dad being a big role model, um, and him uh, serving that really put my foot in the door as far as like influence and why I wanted to join. That's great. I love the story. Well, <laughs> I love that. How do you think the Army National Guard can enhance your career in gaming slash esports? Yeah. Um, to be honest, I think it's like super cool that uh, the Army, um, uh, well, the Army National Guard and the Army uh, are both um, affiliated with a lot of. Um, Esports opportunities now. And uh, to me, that's just an amazing thing because, you know, <laughs> I grew up watching a lot of college football, right? And I used to love watching the Army and Navy games. And as time went on, and of course, as esports, you know, continued to grow and become a thing, it only made sense that uh, the Army would uh, be affiliated with esports as well, along with you know, other sports. <laughs> so um, right. as far as that goes, I mean, um, with me being involved heavily uh, in the esports world, um, I think the Army National Guard will just kind of like coincide with uh, my already mm -hmm. big interest in that area. Well, there's obviously a lot of gamers here tonight, probably listening in parents of gamers. Uh, and, and those who are listening, the dozens listening in tonight, what, what, are, what, what are some ways they can explore some opportunities with the Army National Guard? Yeah. Um, I mean, the biggest thing is that 
uh, you know, definitely checking out their website or going to a recruiter to find out the different types of opportunities that they offer. And of course, the benefits that would apply to them because everyone's different. So they may have different interests. Um, obviously, uh, for today, you know, we're focusing on esports and that's an opportunity you could do in the Army National Guard. So uh, definitely, um, you know, brainstorm and think about, you know, what your interests are. And then, um, you know, you can always reach out to somebody at the Army National Guard and they can help navigate you in the right direction and where you want to go. That's great. Last quick question here, thinking short-term, long-term success, you know, how can the Army National Guard best set someone up for that success, either short-term or long-term? Yeah. Um, well, to me, success, you know, can be measured in many ways, uh, you know, whether it's a short-term goal or a long-term goal, uh, either way, it's still a goal and you can still reach it as long as you have a plan and how to execute that plan. So um, for a lot of people, that's a lot harder, <laughs> easier said than done, right? Mm -hmm. So um, when you look into the Army National Guard and, you know, join it, you are going to be working with a ton of leaders who have, you know, maybe been in your shoes and, um, that's just the best type of experience you can get as far as, uh, you know, figuring out what you want to do, of course, that's like probably the hardest part <laughs> and then setting up a plan on how you're going to reach that goal. So, um, I would say, you know, the army national guard just has a ton of people who are willing to help and nurture and support you as far as, um, uh, well, <laughs> setting up your goals for short term yeah, or long term. Right. That's so <laughs> that's awesome, yeah. Tiffany. Well, great. I'm going to bring you back in after we have our next guest here. She's going to talk for a little bit and we'll come and we'll ask you some uh, information, maybe on some advice you may have. So sure. I'll see you soon. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Okay. Well, we've got a really big presentation next. She, she's, she's actually won some awards uh, recently and I've been really impressed. Actually, Jeff mentioned her earlier. Uh, we're going to bring on Rebecca Dixon, uh, the co-founder and CMO of The Game Hers. That's right, not Game Hers, The Game Hers. Jump on in here, Rebecca. Hey, Baba, how are you? Hey, I'm great. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, I am too. Thank you so much for having me. This is a really awesome event. I've already loved everything I've heard so far. <laughs> That's great. Well, I, I know we've got some families and some parents and kids in here who definitely want to hear your story and want to hear about your organization and what you're doing. So let's dive in. Sure. Yeah? Let's okay. Do it. So Rebecca, tell me a little about you and you know, anything that can help you connect to the audience and just, you know, about a little about your history and who you are. You got it. Uh, my name is Rebecca Dixon. I live in New York city and I, um, am one of the co one of the four co-founders of the gamers and the gamers is a media platform and social networking platform to amplify elevate celebrate and connect women who game um, a little bit of background about why we started the company um, my uh, co-founders and I had a company before this it was in a different industry in the, in the parenting world actually um, I've got three children. But in that, um, in the experience of our company that we had before this, we built a company that created a community for expectant and new parents. We learned a lot about community building and supporting and growing communities that were really engaged, um, supportive of each other and just a great space for expectant and new parents. We also had a matchmaking platform for parents and caregivers. And after we sold that company, it was 2016, um, all of my co-founders and I were kind of doing a little bit of consulting and trying to figure out what to do next. I, um, while I am not endemic to the gaming industry professionally prior to the gamers, my family um, has been in the esports business for a while. My dad and my brother are co-owners, part owners of Team Envy and the Dallas Fuel. And so I have been, you know, just exposed to the esports and gaming industry for quite some time and have been fascinated by it. For one thing, you know, it's, it's such a big industry. There are so many people who um, game and there are so many women who game. So, you know, we had just sold our company. I, I kind of was learning and knew a lot about esports and gaming. My co-founder, totally coincidentally, was doing some video game toy design for Al Khan, who's the visionary behind Pokemon. And the two of us just really started diving in and realizing, you know, all the statistics, there are 2.7 billion gamers in the world. Half of them are women. 
it doesn't seem like, you know, that that's really reflected in the media, the number of developers, the number of esports scholarships, and also just the normalization that, guess what, women game. It's mm -hmm. not even necessarily newsworthy, except it is, uh, because it's not, it's not publicized. So we yeah. did a lot of research and we said we found so many incredible women, both in the industry and just women gamers. We interviewed thousands of them and we thought, you know what? I think we can take our community building skills from our parenting company and really make a difference. And, you know, there were, we always really want to be, con con you know, make sure to say, we are certainly not the first group of women to address this topic by any means. What we decided we could maybe do differently is come in and take and elevate all of the women who were working mm. on this, the nonprofits, the women, you know, who were holding positions at different companies across the industry, the women in colleges, the women, any women we could find that we could amplify, elevate and celebrate um, mm -hmm. to, to normalize it and just to create an easier um, space for women in the industry. So that's where yeah. we are. We can, I can certainly go into more detail. Sure, that's sure. How, yeah. I got here. Let's do, let's do. I mean, definitely Rebecca, I've seen how you guys have just exploded on the scene over the last few years and what you've done. And, um, and, and, and listen, folks, if you're out there, you're wondering what we're saying, we're saying the game hers. Okay. You can go to their website at the game hers.com. That's, that's H E R S. Okay. Yeah, I think you just add an H, right? Hers. Yeah, you just add so, an H in, in between. H is silent, or, but it's there. An H and another E. Got it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I really have uh, enjoyed what you've been doing. And you're right. You have uh, been doing some amazing things with helping other organizations that are led by women, especially in the gaming and esports industry. And I'd love to hear more about some of those initiatives and some of those things yeah, that you're sure. doing with those other nonprofits and you just what you're doing. Yeah, please. Yeah, so what we, um, we, you know, we started off just sort of taking the technique that we knew. We, we always um, believe in taking feedback from our own community. We like to say that we're the least important people in the room. Um, so we started to build a community, you know, at the beginning on just various social networks. And then we immediately turned around and said, okay, you like connecting here, you know, all the places, Instagram, Discord, we had a podcast, um, you know, Twitter, et cetera turned it around, asked them, you know, what we could do better, how we could bring them together, what topics were important. Um, college percolated to the top pretty quickly, which is, which is how, um, how, you know, we got, we got on, got there, which we can get to in a minute. But what we really wanted to do was as quickly as possible, go back to our original mission of amplifying what was already being done. So last fall, we hosted the Gamer Awards and we honored 25 women across the industry and it was community nominated and community voted and so it was such a rewarding experience and such a um a testament to the fact that women are out there they are in the industry they are doing great things and they deserve to be honored the awards went viral you know we landed on the front page of twitch it was just suddenly um it gave us i think a little bit of exposure in, certainly in the industry and a little bit of credibility to say there's a place for this you know people want to honor women want to um we, we talked to so many people who said oh my gosh my friend who's been in the industry for 10 years got, you know got this award and really deserved it and so it was a really special um event and it gave us sort of like i said a lot of exposure to um expand even more and kind of um, continue networking and weaving our way through the industry. In terms of the nonprofits, I just think that there are so many incredible ones who are doing various things in their own individual way. And so if we can find ways to work together to sort of um, give a bigger stage to what they're doing, support what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we always say anytime anybody is doing anything that is aligned with our mission, we want to know about it and we want to share it and we want to be a part of it if we can. Um, because if we can all, you know, it's kind of the great thing about this, this topic and this discussion point in gaming and esports. there's, um, definitely like no competition because if we can make the situation better for women, then we can just all work together and it, it works better for everybody. And so that's, what's been great. We work with a lot of streamers. We work with a lot of, um, college teams. We just, we, we, we have so many different touch points from big major organizations to very small local um, events and and we're excited to continue the journey. That's great. Uh, yeah, I it, it, what you said about um, working with those organizations. There there are some really fun ones out there who are doing some amazing stuff. And 
Um, I, for some reason, I don't know how how well this works, but I recall the girl Arya Stark who plays that character in Game of Thrones. I don't know if any of those Game of Thrones character uh, fans out there, but she said something like a uh, last year or two, like we could all. Do, uh, well, I don't need to be a activist for female rights. Like, uh, why don't we all just be like human rights, like just activists for everybody, and. Yeah. Um, that, but I mean, you also have to share a story, right? You, you, you're, what you're doing is sharing a story that's not heard. And, uh, especially like people who look like me typically, and, uh, there's too many of us. And, um, what I love what you're doing there is, is exploring that and making sure the story is heard and the awards definitely were a very fun event. I really did enjoy those. And we I had some friends that won awards. So it was great. Yeah, um, that was really neat. And to your point, that's another thing I didn't really get into yet, but we do, tr we want, um, any gamer anywhere to kind of come to our content, whether it's on our website or Twitch or whatever, and feel like they can find um, themselves. And so we have, um, you know, all different sorts of topics covered, all different sorts of gamers. You know, we touch on how gaming um, can really uh, help with different mental health issues. And we have, you know, all sorts of, we have a, we have trans writers, we have autistic writers, we have like just so many different, um, you know, types of, of people who have really positive stories about gaming and, um, and, and, you know, sharing them and, and again, just normalizing it. Man, brilliant, brilliant. So tell me a little about what's, uh, what, what you, what you're feeling in the college space right now. What, what are you looking forward to? Yeah. What, what's happening? So, we didn't spend very much long, very much time in this industry before we realized that if we were going to make um, a big difference in the world of gaming and esports for women, that we needed to be very intentional about getting into the college space. And what that means, I mean, you know what? I have to tell you, we're still figuring it out, but we we have a lot of um, different things that are about to launch because we did a very grassroots networking our way through college, just talking to lots of college players, lots of college, um, you know, leagues, college um, deans and coaches. And what we found is what, of course, you and a lot of people know is that the, the world of college gaming and esports is still relatively fragmented. It is becoming less so. Um, and so what we want to do, again, is just create ways for number one for women who are in college and let's say they are just casual gamers and they might want to find other people to game with we want to make that easier um another thing you know we haven't touched too much on sort of the toxicity aspect that exists for some that for exists for women often in gaming we want to create you know spaces that are hopefully free of that and then we also want to sort of you know align ourselves with different organizations that we feel like, hey, if you're aligned with the gamers, then that's a sort of badge of, um, you know, a, a stamp that says you're going to abide by a certain set of rules. So we have, like I said, we have a number of initiatives coming out. We're actually going to do a kind of a big announcement coming up just next week. So stay tuned for that. But it's going to look like uh, it's going to have a lot of different touch points. Some schools, you know, it, it depends on the school. Let's say you're a school that mm. has a lot of women who game and like to game, but they don't just, they don't necessarily have a, um, like a natural way to come together. And it's just sort mm. of because it's not normalized in women game. That's school we may create, you know, a sort of what a chapter program or kind of an initiative where they can be together under the gamers. At some other schools that'll look different, you know, there are lots of different discussions about leagues and things like that. And we're just figuring it, figuring it all out right now. <laughs> but um, we, you know, we want to make it easier. I think some colleges are also trying to figure out how to get women who game in the first place. And of course, once you start looking at college, then you need to go back to high school and figure out how to get more women in high school. I mean, I'm the mother of a third grader and a fifth grader who love to game. And at this point, it's not, it doesn't seem different. You know, they game with their friends who are girls, they game with their friends who are boys. And right. somewhere along the way, it, it splits off a little bit. And so we're still doing, we're actively involved in a lot of research and figuring out all of that kind of stuff too. Yeah, you're so right. Um... The, the college space. I mean, that's honestly, when I started this industry was just having constant conversations and learning yeah. the missing, trying to figure out all the missing gaps. And uh, there definitely is in this classic esports space, uh, yeah. the segmentation, the fragmentation. 
um, and men or just like yours and, and JCWE definitely can help out. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe you have some sort of technology you're coming out soon with that maybe yeah, help so out. We're launching an app and our app will come out later this year. And basically one thing that we found in our extensive research and interviewing many, many women, and also just speaking with our community and talking in our discord and, you know, doing surveys on our social media and all of this stuff is that women who game don't have an easy and safe way to connect. And so, mm. um, you know, maybe you have somebody that you already game with all the time, maybe it's a family member or whatever, and that's great. If you don't, it's kind of hard to just find someone in a situation that feels safe and convenient. So lots of times it's like throwing out a Hail Mary on Twitter, depending on your time zone and your game and your whatever. And then Discord, you know, leaves a little or a lot to be desired in terms of, say, um, you know, free freedom from safety and harassment and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, we have, you know, what we think is going to be a great solution for that. Again, we've done, we have done so many focus groups and test groups, and we're really excited to launch it. And it will be launched, you know, like I said, a little bit later this year, and we will definitely be um, shouting out to the world about it when that happens, um, because we're super, super excited about it. So uh, more to come on that, but it will be called the Gamers app, uh, the Game Hers app. And we think also it'll be a great tool for college students to use. They're, you know, they're made, depending on the, the exactly how it ends up in its final iteration, um, there will be some upgrades and things like that. But most, most of the functionalities of the app will be free and we expect most people to use it for mm. free. So because of that, we think it'll be great for college students. And um, we are just really, um, we're thrilled yeah. to, be able to offer that solution. Well, Rebecca, th these last few minutes here, you touched on it uh, quite a bit there, and I really want to hit this because it needs to be talked about. And you mentioned safety, or you talked about toxicity, um, and I know we've, if you've, if you've, you've been on women's uh, in the esports panels before, I've watched a lot, I've done some things I've heard. And it's a struggle that a lot of people don't realize that things like uh, not turning on your headset or your audio chat because you feel fear harassment and you're right. Places like Discord can suffer from not having enough safety and those companies kind of put the onus on the participant and they really don't take the initiative. So it's nice to hear an app that maybe have some safe places, which are very important to hear about. So I wanted to finish up and just and just get it out there that then, and I know we'll talk to Jen about it later as well, because she's, uh, she works in this industry heavily as a commentator and as a host, uh, but toxicity in gaming esports, what, is there ever going to be a silver bullet? If, are we going to have something, uh, it, are we going to change? You know, I think so. What I would love to say about the esports and gaming industry is I do think that one really positive thing um, about it is this conversation is happening and it's happening pretty frequently um, and it's happening with um, allies, you know? I mean, you know, you're hosting this, this is, this is great. And I think that even some of the companies who are viewed as being sort of most at fault or, um, you know, because it's both a problem in, in casual gaming at home and then also sort of in the industry. I think though the conversation is there and, and the, the, the industry as a whole wants to fix it. And so the more, you know, listen, I wish we weren't having to talk about this, right? Like it would be nice if we just didn't even need to have this conversation, but the reality is that we do. And so since we do, it's nice that, that, that the industry is open to having it. I can give you a, an example. We just um, started doing a clubhouse room every week on Monday nights at seven. If anybody is on clubhouse and you'd like to join us, and we've had some really fun conversations and we'll continue to do so. And in that room, we have a lot of men come. And I think that's, you know, that's important um, because it's the whole situation and the, the narrative and, and, and the, you know, the toxicity for lack of a better word is not going to go away until everybody sort of talks about it. And, you know, we get asked all the time or I get asked all the time on, on various panels and things like that. Well, what would you suggest, you know, what can somebody in an organization do? I think somebody in an organization can just continue to talk about it, continue to try to hire women, you know, have sort of a, a policy that, you know, no at all, no toxicity, no harassment at all accepted. 
And then it also goes down to sort of like the grassroots level. Like if you're gaming with your friends at home and you know, you're a guy and one of your guy friends is being, is harassing a, a female that you're playing with, you know, end the game or leave or say, you don't accept that. I think that's, that's sort of like the micro level and the macro level. Um, but the fact that we're all talking about it. Yeah. I do think it's going to get better. I do for sure. Yeah. Set some boundaries. If you're out there and you're, I mean, if, from what I hear, um, for, out there, set boundaries. If you're a female player, um, a gamer, um, and if you're an adult or, um, 20 something, 30 something, and you are setting a bad example, let's all stop. <laughs> and I think, I think it's just as much as I maybe yell at the screen when the chiefs are playing football and yell at the refs or whatever, my kids see that, right? So the more us adults can show that better example, then the better, I think I have three little boys and, um, you know, the yeah. better example they'll have, right? Exactly. Exactly. Rebecca, this has been amazing. I, I hope um, and I, I think that a lot of people are going to get a lot out of this tonight and then hopefully the content and see some video on demand of this because you've got a great story. I do want to ask, didn't you win something recently with the trade association? We what was did. that all about? Thank you. We won the, the pitch competition at the eSports Trade Association um, uh, uh, event. I can't think of what it was called, right? eSports Next. And we were so honored because there were mm -hmm. a number of other companies that were pitching too that were amazing. I think, mm -hmm. you know, what I think one thing we have going for us is that nobody can really argue with with our mission. And while we while we founded ourselves as a company, because like I said, we felt like we could move the needle by being a we felt we call it a for purpose company. Um, we, you know, we really believe in the mission so strongly. And um, I think that resonates with a lot of people throughout the industry and beyond. So that was really exciting. Thank you for bringing that up. And thank you for having me. This is such yeah. a great conversation. It was fun. You were, you were, it was in like, it was a tight contest. And I'll just go ahead and take credit because like I wasn't going to show up that day. I was like real busy with stuff. I was like, you know, what? I want to watch this. I'm going to, I know Rebecca's going to do awesome. And then it was one by one vote. So I know. pretty much me. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> no, oh, no, thank you very not much at all. Not at all. <laughs> don't, don't put that on the internet. Uh, it's already there. Okay. Well, awesome, Rebecca. Thank you so, so much for being here. Yeah, this has been great. Yeah. I, I hope a lot of people got out of this and, um, and we'll, we'll talk some more. Awesome. This was a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right, see ya. Okay, everyone. Thank you for that first segment. If you're just tuning in, this is the women in esports um, section of the series that is the NJCAAE and Army National Guard webinar series. I'm going to bring back in Tiffany. Tiffany, jump on in here. I got a quick question for you if you want to uncamera there. Um, you know, Hello. you're with Army. Hey, howdy. What did you, anything, anything cool you heard from Rebecca? Oh, yes. Uh, Rebecca, that was an amazing segment uh, that you just spoke on. I completely agree with everything that you had mentioned. And um, I, it's really actually exciting to hear another female, um, you know, bring up things that, uh, you know, myself have uh, thought about and encountered. And that's just very, uh, very powerful, very uplifting. I love that. So thinking of all that, any advice you may have uh, from, from your perspective uh, for younger women um, who are who actually, let's, let's take this route. Any advice you have for younger women that are interested in pursuing maybe part-time opportunities with the Army National Guard? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think uh, a lot of these uh, topics kind of like coincide with each other in a way, like they can be uh, applicable in certain ways. But um, as far as like joining the Army National Guard, especially as a part-time opportunity, uh, if you're on the fence about it, I would definitely say take that step forward to get more information and, um, you know, kind of pursue that. Uh, I highly encourage um, anyone who is in school or wants to go to college or maybe who just wants to start working right out of, right after high school, um, but also wants a little bit of support um, like, uh, like the Army National Guard provides. Um, as an example for me, like I work full time, um, mm -hmm. and I really wanted to take advantage of, um, you know, the benefits that the army national guard will offer me as a part-time, uh, service member. And then, um, on top of that, um, 
you know, you learn a ton of different skills that you can apply to outside of the military, like in your civilian life, you can use those skills and knowledge. And to me, that's a very, very powerful uh, tool to have. Awesome. Well, Specialist Tiffany, great. That was great advice. Um, uh, I'm going to bring you back in after uh, Jen's interview and we'll ask you some last wrap up questions, but thanks for that advice for our young women out there. Cool. No problem. Awesome. Okay, if you're just tuning in, we're going to jump into another interview here, and we're going to be giving out some information. There's quite a few people here, and let you remember, it just there is a $500 scholarship out there available. We're going to be talking about it soon, and it's going to come up probably after this interview. So you need to listen or in the interview. Who knows? You should probably listen in. So if you're multitasking, you're doing something else, or you're playing fork knife, listen in. Okay. But right now I'm going to talk, introduce real quickly. We have Jennifer Lemon Kiwi and she is going to be coming to the stage. She is a caster and commentator for Overwatch contenders series. Jump on in here. Jen, say hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? I love uh, your mic. I was just, you just said lemon kiwi and then I, I see you're speaking like into a lemon. So that's fantastic. Oh yeah. Yeah. L the, the lemon kiwi microphone. There we go. <laughs> well, well, thank you for being here. I, I, I know if a lot of people have followed your career, there's some probably people here who have followed what you've been doing. And I say, man, keep it up. Um, Thanks. because it's fun to watch. And, uh, you know, this, this industry is, is great and expanding and you're on the grassroots, the, the ground level of it. So I'm, I'm enjoying it. So thanks for doing what you do. Thank you. So let's start off. Uh, tell, tell me a little about your history, about yourself. Um, you know, something, something awesome, something fun that, uh, that we want to, that we should know about you. Oh God, I don't know how fun this all sounds, but hopefully you fellow esports gamers out there will think this is cool. Uh, okay. So my name is Jennifer Pichette, uh, also known as Lemon Kiwi Online. Don't ask me, okay. Strawberry Kiwi was taken okay on Xbox, so I ended up with Lemon Kiwi. <laughs> so that's what I'm known as, is my caster name. Uh, I'm a professional play-by-play -play esports commentator. I started in Call of Duty about seven, eight years ago. It's It's been a while. I was just like in my first year of college um, when I started that. And now I primarily work in Overwatch for now it's been like three years or so, but I've also expanded my work into Rocket League, Warzone, League of Legends, anyone who plays those games, thumbs up. Um, and I've taken on other roles in esports to fill my time, such as feature writing, uh, like writing articles about players and interviewing them, uh, video and streaming content on Twitch, YouTube, stuff like that. And I've also taken on hosting. Um, I also have a bachelor's of biomedical science and a master's in microbiology so that's that's the that's what's fun about me the, it's not too exciting <laughs> where, where are you from originally oh canada okay that's, i could hear probably... it i could hear it you can hear it sorry but <laughs> I mean, or so you're welcome. Okay, i don't say sorry it's not that obvious it's not that obvious <laughs> well we ha definitely have some canadians here i'm sure and and thank you for for sharing that <laughs> so i appreciate that well that's great so you so you started in esports it sounds like you're in in college and you were doing doing stuff around commentating hosting and call of duty is fun by the way the new map just dropped obviously Ooh. today which was pretty yeah. crazy um and a master's degree when you said your master's degree was in what now microbiology microbiology yeah. so what what there's a lot of us who went through college and who are going through college right now who how many times? I think I switched my major three times. Did you ever switch <laughs> your major or you went the whole no, four years? I really knew I wanted to do science like from seventh grade high school when I did this project with a fish in a bowl and I would put fertilizer in it and I made it made a, the fish die. And I was like, Hey, this is pretty cool. Not the, you know, killing fish part, but the science part of it. Um, and I was like, man, research is really interesting. So I just knew from the get go, it was going to be science. And then, yeah, I kind of went biomedical science route. Cause mm -hmm. you know, you know, parents, they're like, Oh, become doctor, become doctor, <laughs> make lots of money. So I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. And turns out <laughs> med school is hard to get into. And then I just decided research was, cause I've always been kind of like an exploratory or mm -hmm. problem solver type of person where research was up my alley. And so it sounds like you're using some of that, those skills to, you said in writing and doing some research as well and yeah. writing. And what, what are some stuff you've been writing about? Um, 
I, re- I just like to tell because casting is, is more than just yelling over a game. You're you're telling the story of what's happening in a match. There's more than just saying what's on your screen, but how important this match is to every single player and where the players come from and what the team has gone through through the season or the league to get you know, has it been hard losses? Has it been great successes? So I, I've just loved the storytelling aspect of casting that I now can just do it in a writing format. So I'll go and like call up players and interview them more mm. on the professional side of things and just either profile them. And it has to be kind of like a major event that's happened, um, whether it's like kind of seeing about their mental health or did they just retire oh. or uh, did they just join a new team? And like, why did you just change this team? So I, I like to get kind of those yeah. fan questions out there. Cause I'm always like, you know, why did this player do this? And instead of just wondering, I just talked to them and wrote an article and just kind of share that, mm-hmm. share the insights with the, the community. So asking questions, it sounds great. Cause I mean, if, if parents, if you're out there, you, you're hearing that there is a parallel here to something that Jen is doing in the esports industry that a, probably a favorite sports writer you've seen write about Tom Brady or something, right? So there is careers and there's opportunities uh, in the esports industry outside just playing video games. As as you can attest to that to your commentating, hosting. What what I mean, what what do you what's what's great about that? What what's the most fun part about hosting and commentating and yelling over the games, as you say? Oh, well, if it's if the obvious answer wasn't just like the games that I love and then the players, I, I cover a lot of the semi-pro scenes a lot. And I don't know if anyone watches like, you know, your college basketball or your college sports. And for anyone who's into college sports, you watch it because there's almost more passion from those semi-pro players and those players who haven't gotten to the, the top level yet. And it's just, oh, the narratives and the storylines of just how passionate those players are. It's just really what drew me to covering esports and that side of uh, the world but beyond that um i got the travel so what kind of (laughs) was cool is i was in college you know nine to five like putting 40 hours a week into research and science and my schooling but then i got to start casting um i actually wanted to be a player funny story because Mm -hmm. i'm just a really competitive person and i thought i was really good at video games i i kind of am but maybe not to a professional level um so um this girl league that i was kind of uh, playing around and just just a bunch of girls coming together and playing video games together they were recruiting uh, female casters so i was like cool i'll sign up for that and i just signed up for a bunch of tournaments to cast uh starting for free you know kind of those unpaid internships yeah we love those uh (laughs) took me a long time before i started getting paid but then when i started getting paid people were flying me out to this was when i was in canada still so i was being flown out to the united states little old me who's like never left the country or even the province got to go to like Florida, Louisiana, California, just like a bunch of places where everything, all expenses paid, just got to travel um, and cast and tie my two favorite things of traveling and video games. And even this year, I got to go to Europe too. So Hmm. just, yeah, the traveling and also just the game itself is what I love about what I do. Now, spe- now, speaking of games, it, have you commented or hosted something that you maybe haven't played yet? Because there's a question in the Q&A about how familiar you need to be. And have you ever had experience where you maybe have hosted or commented something you haven't played or don't know too well? Or is yeah, that a requirement usually? <laughs> it- it's very strongly encouraged to know the game, but sometimes people like you and they think that you are either a hard worker or they like your personality and they just want to have you in their game. Like I've definitely been approached to do games that I've never played or seen before, but it's also up to me, depending on how much time they give me to learn that I'm going to go and buy the game or, or play the game as much as I can and learn about the base as fast as possible, because it's really hard to BS uh, a game you don't know, because the whole point of casting is trans translating knowledge on the screen Mm -hmm. to somebody who doesn't know the game. And if you don't know the game, then you're not a very good translator in that part. So, uh, but I've definitely been asked to do games I've never done before, but then I've also put in the hours to like get up to get up to speed. And it's a process. Like it's something like I've casted Overwatch for two, three years and I'm always learning something new. Um, So casting takes a lot of time to perfect. Yeah. I guess, I guess if you were just, just first in Overwatch and, well, the big guy threw out, threw out a big chain and pulled some dude. And then this other guy with a sword <laughs> is cutting him now and shot a dragon at him. It's like that would that would probably not be as entertaining. So, yeah. So good on you for 
you know, <laughs> doing, you know, experiencing it and uh, researching it. Um, Let's get a little, let's let's dive in a little more. Um, what what are some challenges maybe you've experienced, uh, or maybe you or any other women in your field have experienced? It, it just challenges. It can range anywhere. What 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 kind of challenges have you experienced as a, a female commentator, or just anybody in esports for that for that matter? Yeah, and this the same problems I think probably transcend even into traditional sports. I think esports has maybe grown a little bit more than traditional sports when it comes to the diversity. Like, I feel like traditional sports has been around obviously millions of years longer than than esports, and they're still having issues with female commentators and just how they really don't belong in the space. Because that's the major problem that happens in traditional sports and esports is that people are not used to hearing a woman's voice when they when when they're hearing commentating. Um, that's still something people are not used to. When people are not used to something, they don't like change. So I'll get a lot of hate just for straight up being a woman. Uh, thankfully, I was blessed with a more deeper voice, so it's not as egregiously squeaky. Uh, so maybe I, I get some passes, but uh, it's definitely like, yeah, the voice is always one. Um, kind of branding as a woman, like as you're working as a woman in the professional scene, you're just kind of held to this really high, much higher mm. standard um, compared to colleagues. Like your mistakes are just magnified and amplified and just scrutinized of uh, your relationships, how you present yourself, what you're wearing is always mm -hmm. kind of looked at, always more scrutinized is always the word I'm looking for. Um, as you know, if a man posts himself shirtless, I'm not saying girls go shirtless, but man, if he's shirtless mm -hmm. at the gym, he's feeling good. You're like, yo, you mm -hmm. look good, dude. And if a girl's like at the beach in a bikini, not so, not so mm -hmm. professional, apparently, mm -hmm. you know, there's just yeah. like very different ways that women are looked at. Um, and just in a professional way, you have to be just so clean and proper. And women are always expected to be that perfect, clean, proper. Mm -hmm. And that's something I still struggle with today of just. You know, I, I see maybe male colleagues or just others that, that get away with stuff, but I have to be more professional because of women and I just, yeah. the mistakes are amplified. So I, I feel like there's just much higher standards and I'm not sure why, but I try to hold myself as a professional at all times, but mm -hmm. that, that gets hard too sometimes. But sure, Jen, it's, it's leadership like yours and examples like yours that we need for these young uh, women in esports and gaming that are listening in right now that uh, need to hear that. Yeah, I mean, even us side by side, I'm going to be judged less, e even though I have a jacket on and uh, and uh, and <laughs> you're wearing a sweater like you're going to be judged more because um, and that's I think what I'm saying is people can now relate because people are telling their story. And I think that's what people need to hear. And you're telling that story. And so these young women out there can hear that they're not alone. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, great questions in the chat. If you have other questions, we'll try to get to those uh, in the Q and a, and I, I wanted to, this one probably relates to what Christopher in the chat is asking. What, what, um, what advice do you have for young women uh, that are uh, going into the field or either they're Whoa. playing and maybe they, um, particularly aren't good at, you know, socialization or wanting to get out of their bubble or really, I mean, that's a lot of people, uh, but what, what's the, what's a good step to take to get past the worry and the fear of using your voice and having a voice and being in front of peers as a caster or a commentator? Yeah, I totally relate to this question because I just, I know it, it might be yeah, hard to tell, but I used to just cry and have like mental breakdowns if I had to public speak or I could not make friends. That's why I was into video games. I'm an only child. I don't like people or I used to not like people. I used to be very shy. And now I, you know, just speak in front of thousands of people every day. So it's, it's definitely a growing yeah. process. Um, how I kind of got out of that off. bubble was first advice is having like a safe circle of friends or colleagues you know thumbs up if it's colleagues too because if you can just trade advice and trade questions with people who work in your industry man it saves you from asking stupid questions or doing the wrong thing to the wrong person <laughs> so you know some things some things as stupid as like how should i write this email uh, how how can I clean up this email or how should I apply for this job? Can you look at my resume or what should I do about this? Is this too much? Just like anything you're overthinking about having a safe circle on, of friends that you can just vent to or just have those questions be um, asked. And then the other thing of if you're not really sure how to network because 
it, beyond esports, it's just networking hours. is so important to get any well, job in any industry. And who you know sometimes will get you a job. Uh, well. You know, luck does play a part in that opportunity. So how I've started to get out of that bubble is, you know, social media, very powerful tool. I'm sure you guys are all on Facebook, hopefully Twitter and Instagram and, and, and LinkedIn, just very casually replying to people's posts and showing your interest in other people. First, you have to be a genuine person who genuinely cares and is interested in other things, because it's very obvious when someone is not genuine and only cares about talking to you for, for reasons. But just I would just how I started my network was just replying to people's posts like either you know asking questions showing interests you know congratulating them on a new position because no one's going to be like ew why is that person commenting like mm -hmm. no one's going to be like that so just showing that you're a friendly thing in a casual public platform and then see where it goes from there uh, if they follow you back if you build some kind of connection depending on your social media then conversations are more easily start by there instead of cold cold calling someone mm -hmm. you've never spoken or shown interest to um, so those two major things. And if because especially for women, other women want to help women, there's no woman in this industry that's like, ew, I only care about myself um, right because it's just hard for any women to move up, up in the industry. So if you reach out to someone who has your dream job or someone you look up to with go to their business emails, send them questions, the it doesn't have to be super clean and proper, but more likely than not, they're going to reply to you because that's what happened to me. I sent emails to women I looked up to of just, hey, how did you get through this or what do you do here? Just any questions you have about how to move up in the world they will more likely answer it. And then the worst case scenario, they just don't email you back. And then whatever. It's probably because they were too busy. So don't worry about it. But those yeah. are the three main things. Yeah, you, I mean, you're hitting on like the the Gary V uh, social media model, right? Like DMing people, <laughs> like being in comments, right? And and if, I mean, you, you obviously you have a brand the, and the, that brand. Oh, yes, um, it's supposed to give you an option you, to pick the. When we talk about a lot of uh, students uh, that are listening OBS in, a lot of them, right? will, particularly, I hear this comment a lot. Uh, the, I was a know, dream hack in the, an outfit just like this. And a bunch of kids walked up and said, Hey, can you sponsor me, bro? Because, <laughs> <laughs> because that's what kids are thinking about. They're watching YouTube. They're watching Twitch. They're realizing, man, if I can just get a sponsorship deal, I will never have to work again. And I can play video games all the time. And it's not that obviously, because that's not what it is. Just like, Oh, if I just get, uh, you know, recruited, um, I could be like LeBron. I'd be easy, but the, that's the work you put in. <laughs> right. And the, and the, uh, the, the work it takes to build that brand. And um, yeah, the advice, and I, I think there's, there's, I'm not sure. I, when I look at this question from Hannah in the the chat, the like, I'm obviously, sure uh, Jen here has a degree in or a master's right in bioscience. Did I say the... that right? Yeah, microbiology. Yeah. Microbiology. Some, okay. Some kind of science. Some sort of but science. Yes. <laughs> and then <laughs> my degree is in recreation uh, is management. So when the question is being a commentator for esports or being in this field of production and journalism and um you know video commentator or whatever it, it, we've we've got the answer for you you don't really need a degree there is a lot of luck like you said uh there's a lot of just putting yourself out there and making content too so um hope that helps with that question um i want to finish up here and ask you some a uh, real good question uh, about uh, who's someone you look up to as a mentor in your life um, I don't know if anyone here watches League of Legends or, or cares about that at all. Um, there's a female commentator there or analyst commentator uh, called Frostgren. And she's someone who I've always looked up to. She's a professional commentator, just like me, more on the color analyst side of things. And I'm more play by play, but just she's been a professional in the industry for so long. And when I had said that advice of like reaching out to women, because women always want to help women, she was the first person like I reached out to with questions of just, hey, like, can you look at some of my work? Or hey, can you just give me advice on, on some of the questions I had about women of, I think one of the ones I had that I was so unsure of for the longest time was how harsh can I be as a commentator as a woman? Because women, when you're being critical, you're seen as a B word. I don't want to swear. But when you're a man who's critical, you know, it's not seen that way. It's kind of like the political science of it. Like if any poli sci majors are here, you you guys would know more about that. But I was just had so many questions on how I should behave as a woman and how differently I should behave as a woman and should I do this should I do that should I wear this should I wear that should I tweet this should I tweet that it's just 
I kind of overthought a lot of things because I always was told that women didn't belong and I just wanted to be part of the boys. And then she just kind of like looked, first of all, she gave me a piece of her time. She's like a star and like famous, I guess, in the world of esports for anyone who doesn't know her. And she just like sat down with little old me who was like kind of a nobody at the time. And she just answered all my questions. She even like looked at some of my casting videos and like gave me advice. And she just like gave me the time of day. And I think like that meant a lot and just helped me uh, get a foundation, like a confidence and just find my path. Cause I think that's like the scariest part of maneuvering around any career is getting lost on how, how do you get from point A to point B? And it's not just a linear path. You know, there's some careers that are very easy and then they're you know, let's get this degree, get this job. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in esports, it's there's it's a very young industry. You're not just gonna get a degree and get accepted into any esports job. You have to work your way up. And it's not as simple as just be talented, LOL. Like it's you have to network, you have to mm -hmm. have a brand, you mm -hmm. have to be involved, you have to know people. And it's just it's not as simple as just put yourself out there. There's tips and tricks in the industry, things to do and not to do, and mistakes that you just have to do in order to learn from them. Yeah. And the fact that she kind of taught me so much and someone I looked up to wanted to talk to me and help me, like made a whole world of a difference. And now when people reach out to me for help, I'm giving them help. So it's like a, a pay it forward type of thing. And to this day, she, we still even mm. talk to this day. I don't even know how she will give me the time of day, but she's uh, incredible. Frasker, and again, for anyone who wants to check her out, it's like F-R-O-S-K-U-R-I-N-N. On Twitter and stuff like that, she she's incredible and super talented. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out. Uh, I, I, this is this is great stuff, Jen. I, I feel like all what you said should probably be on a really big cool T-shirt, uh, but if not, like <laughs> let's let's like clip this somehow. Like we're gonna we're obviously recording it, so we'll make this kind of because that was really good. That was really good advice, I think, uh, and uh, perspective, uh, as well as what you've said about um, females want to work with females, obviously. You, we, we all heard from Rebecca earlier with the game hers. Um, that is, I think her mantra in the game hers is um, women working with women. And I think there's some, there, we've heard some kind of questions in the Q and A about how do we get more young ladies involved and women participation. And I think it just requires uh, a little bit of what you said, or a lot of what you said is women reaching out to women and working together. And maybe Ryan, that, that question about getting more females into your, your programs uh, yeah, empowerment, just like Mia says, to get more empowerment with those young, those four females who are there in the team to build something even stronger, even like a, a roster with all females to really enforce that empowerment. So uh, this has been great, Jen. Am I really, I, there's a lot of takeaways like, here, and I hope the people like listening in tonight the virtual camera, we're able to take something away and definitely follow you. Can I you give us drops from your socials where we can find no you? Oh, uh, Lemon Kiwi with an underscore at the end. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, stuff like that. You'll find me there. Oh my god! Awesome, great. Okay, well, I, I I have to uh, reinstall TikTok and I'll have to start <laughs> watching, um, or just go the browser version. Uh, so yeah. it took it, honestly. You know how it works. It takes way too yeah. much of your time when you wake up ten or you look up two and hours later. Um, <laughs> so. Hey, Jim, this has been great. We, I've learned a ton. I uh, really appreciate your time coming in here and, and sharing with us. And I would also, wish hi, you nothing Molly. but success in your hi. future endeavors. Sorry, but hello. And I just wanted to have one quick it's shout okay, out to Rebecca the and the Game Hairs because yeah. I was nominated for <laughs> Shoutcaster of the my Year. Well. And that just like made my day made my yeah. whole year that that Let happened key, and just the bro. fact that they empower women yeah. in all these what? different like, roles what? who don't often get recognized Wait, and get overshadowed i don't remember if i ever got an answer so are we announcing big shout out to the game hers um, maybe i didn't ask that, that, that was just are we announcing awesome all the players in the same way we did for high school GP? that's so amazing thank no. you <laughs> there she is right there, <laughs> oh, there <she> is. <laughs> rebecca come in here and say hello you guys let's get a photo i'll get out for a minute <laughs> where are you going just, come just on rebecca the you didn't hear Maybe well, say she's their like names something right now. and then that's there it. There she is. Oh, sorry. Are, oh, you don't like, know. are we doing like first name, battle tag, last name, right. or just battle hey, tags? Hey. Or... Hi, how are <laughs> you? Good. Thank <laughs> you so much for the shout out and for everything you just said. That was mm -hmm. such incredible. Mm -hmm. um, just everything. It was all incredible. What a role model. Yeah, that was just awesome. And then just the, it also connected me to like other people because, you know, other shoutcasters don't talk to each other from other games. Mm -hmm. We don't even know each other. So I got to connect with other people and it was it was just cool. We oh, never get recognized you. like that. 
Well, listen, we're just about to start planning the awards again for this year. We are planning them for this year and they're just going to be so special again. So um, we'll definitely be, be spreading the word because we're so excited to, you know, to honor, to do it again. So yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thanks for it. You gave some great advice. You really did. So yeah, I, yeah, you did. I really enjoyed it. Thank you both ladies. Thank you so, so much. It was great Bye. having you. I'm going to bring Tiffany back in and uh, we're going to wrap up here. Thank you, Rebecca, for being amazing. Uh, Tiffany, jump back in, uh, Specialist Tiffany. So any great any great takeaways there tonight uh, oh, from, yes. from that, from Lemon Kiwi? <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, great job, Lemon Kiwi, um, or Jen. Uh, it was uh, really awesome talking points that you had. And uh, I really agree with you and your thoughts along with Rebecca. I mean, it's, uh, again, it's just crazy how um, a lot of us, obviously, we don't necessarily know each other on a personal level, but we encounter the same exact things. And we see a lot of things that are happening in this community. And I think it's really important that, uh, you know, we get together and talk about things like this. So it's awesome. Well, let's, let's wrap up here. Uh, this has been so much fun. Um, give, give me some last bit of advice uh, from your perspective uh, specialist Tiffany on what are some best practices really for navigating the workforce? If we're, if we're talking to young students, what's some, what's some good quick outline, quick hits that I think we've kind of touched on tonight, but what are some good ones to leave everybody with? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I know it was mentioned before, but networking is obviously very important. Um, the biggest thing aside from that though, is just being confident and being humble because um, just to give you guys a little bit of background about me, I started working when I was 16. So when I was in high school, uh, I was a part-time employee at GameStop. <laughs> that was like my dream job as nice, a kid. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, and it was great. You know, I got my foot in the door as far as like uh, working with the public on a, like a sales type of level. And then um, I then started working at Best Buy part-time um, still in high school. And then actually my senior year of high school, I was promoted to full-time and I was actually working full-time at Best Buy as a high school student, which is crazy. Um, and then after that, uh, I went to college and then, you know, going to college, uh, obviously um, that is a whole new world. <laughs> um, and uh, to pay for college, I was working. Um, I eventually became supervisor at Best Buy while attending school full-time. So um, a lot of a lot of working and a lot of networking. Um, and then after my bachelor's degree, I started working at one of the biggest banks in the world, uh, Chase. And at Chase, Sweet. I continued to grow as a professional and then also get my master's degree um, through Chase. And um, through all this time of me working, um, I, I do have to say, you know, just being humble and confident and owning up to things that you may not be, um, you may not know very well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's never a good idea to uh, pretend to know something and then come off a little cocky or something like that. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. you know, understanding uh, uh, even communication, um, mm -hmm. you know, learning how to communicate effectively with your peers and your leaders or even subordinates, uh, that is a very big skill to learn in the yeah. workforce as well. Well, you, you, I think the word you probably look for is confidence there instead of cockiness, right? Like the confidence of, mm -hmm. I, I would say you probably have a lot of confidence with the work history you have, uh, especially with Tiffany, because um, here, kids, listen, your parents have been telling you to work hard and you don't listen like I didn't. Well, somebody awesome just told you this. So now you have to hear it. <laughs> it's like when yes. your coach says it, but your parents say it too. And like, you only listen to your coach. Right. Yes. I mean, there's going to be times where you're going to be nervous or shy mm -hmm. and you know, that don't let that stop you. Mm -hmm. Just if you really want something, or if this is just a stepping stone for you, like, obviously I wasn't going to work at GameStop forever, like no shame to GameStop or anything, but, but that was just a stepping stone for me. Mm -hmm. And I knew it was because it would get me to where I am now, um, you know, now serving part-time in the national guard and then mm -hmm. being able to, uh, work full-time, um, you know, at a, at a bank, like that's, uh, it all, you all have to start somewhere. <laughs> so just keep going. Don't stop. <laughs> yeah. And definitely take customer service roles. If you can, uh, GameStop probably taught you some customer you know, other roles. If you can, if you, you need to work in retail or food in some part of your life to understand <laughs> how not to hate a waiter. Right. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm yes. going to ask you, I'm going to ask you about role model here in a second, but is there, 
all all that all that um time in college obviously cost some dollars is there something that may have helped offset that by any chance yeah i mean well so the army national guard they obviously have a great program on assisting um, individuals with mm. education um and they highly encourage it i mean obviously getting a degree is a very noble thing um or maybe not noble is not the right word but uh, notable <laughs> so um it definitely uh that is just one big selling point um on the national guard and then on top of that just the skills you learn there uh but for me personally i actually did not have my um my college covered by the army national guard because i already had it paid off when i joined <laughs> so nice. um so so kind of missed out on that <laughs> yes yeah if i would have joined earlier mm. i would have been in better uh, a better position <laughs> That's right. there are there are ways that that is what it's there for so yes. last question here for us tonight and we'll be done uh, uh give us a mentor or a role model um that contributed in your life for gaming esports as well as your involvement in the army national guard yeah absolutely um i would say i there's two people that really stick out to me um and they kind of like overlap in ways as well um but as far as like the gaming um aspect uh i have a friend uh he goes by zim He's actually the CEO of a gaming organization that I'm also affiliated with called Eastern Media GG. And um, he is also a 13-year service member in the Army. So um, working with him and collaborating with him has given me a lot of motivation and inspiration on wanting to improve my content and then um, also lead others on improving their content because uh, the gaming sphere is only going to continue to grow when we have, you know, esports, and then we just have regular content mm -hmm. creation, you know, mm -hmm. from like, Mr. Beast mm -hmm. to, <laughs> you know, just any, you know, streamer streaming after school or after work. Um, it's, it's a big, uh, big moneymaker as far as like, uh, you know, for sponsors and um, businesses to enter into that industry as well. So there's always going to be a need for it. I mean, there's, I can't remember the statistic, but there's like billions of views going on worldwide every second, like just billions of just all that data mm -hmm. being downloaded into people's mm -hmm. heads. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyways, before I keep ranting on about that, uh, but anyways, he has been a big inspiration as far as like helping me out um, with the gaming side of things. And then uh, as far as the Army National Guard, a uh, big shout out to my recruiter, uh, Sergeant Youngsma. Um, she has been uh, an amazing support um, support line, I would say, <laughs> mm -hmm. for uh, getting me involved in the Army National Guard and then never leaving my side. Um, she's been very transparent uh, with, uh, you know, my process and what my process would look like, you know, joining, she had my interests and my priorities at heart, um, which is a big thing. Cause again, we're all different. We all join the military for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, and to me, that's just been a phenomenal experience and I can't thank her enough for, uh, <laughs> for, you know, sticking through this process with me and then continuing to be uh, an awesome friend as well. Well, awesome. Well, let's let's wave hi, the sergeant, right? Sergeant Youngsma, she's here. She's oh, here. Yeah, she's she watching might be, in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she, cool. I see her. She said hello earlier. She was here to support you. Nice. So look hey. at that. You didn't. <laughs> she she didn't even pay you to say all that. You actually said it out of the kindness of your heart. Look at that, Sergeant yeah. Youngsma. That's amazing. Yep. There you go. <laughs> well, this has been awesome. What a great great night of learning for all of us. Um, I, I'm going to let you bounce, and then we'll. Uh, I definitely want to catch up with you later on Twitter and talk some more. Uh, but I sure. appreciate your time. Thank you so so much, Specialist Tiffany. Yes, thank you, Bubba. This was fun. Yeah. <laughs>